Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. We've been working all day to find out why two airmen at the Grand Forks Air Force Base were found shot to death. The news broke this morning, and Valley News Team's Joshua Pagaro has been at the base shortly was at the base shortly after that. He joins us now live from Grand Forks. Joshua, what can you tell us? Today, Mike, the mayor and the Air Force Base's colonel say they're heartbroken by this incident. So I'm going to run you down some of the facts. According to the colonel, personnel responded at 4.30 this morning to a deadly shooting inside a dormitory. Two active duty dorm, uh, airmen were killed. In the last decade, there have been five incidents uh, involving active duty personnel, including today's. And now, those are incidents with where an uh, active duty service member was killed. Uh, the most recent one happened in 2015. Colonel Cameron Cameron Pringle says how a gun got inside the dormitory and the relationship between the two individuals he cannot release. Apparently guns aren't allowed inside that area and we questioned the colonel quite a bit on this. Um, he did say mental health resources are being made available uh, to those at the base. Uh, this incident is the second deadly shooting, deadly shooting incident to happen uh, in the Grand Forks area uh, to, um, in the last in less than a week. Two people died on Wednesday including an officer. Let me be clear, our installation is safe. We believe this is an isolated incident. Our community has been through a lot. Again, I don't want to belabor the point, but guns normally are not allowed inside the dormitory. Uh, the uh, Colonel Pringle says the identities of the individuals who died should be released sometime tomorrow. In Grand Forks, reporting live, Joshua Piguero, Valley News Live. All right, Joshua, thank you so much. We'll continue to follow this story. And for the very latest, make sure you download the VNL News app. Be careful out there, drivers. The heat from today has led to problems on area roads. Heading south, the far left lane of 45th Street South in Fargo has buckled. This has created a bump in the road and loose concrete that has drivers stepping on the brakes. If you are driving down 45th Street, please slow down. Never underestimate the weather in this part of the country. We knew it was going to be hot today, but after yesterday's cool, breezy conditions, I certainly didn't expect that we'd break a record. Hutch is here with word on what you can expect tonight. Hutch? Unbelievable ups and downs over the last few days. It was Saturday morning. We had a frost advisory for northwest Minnesota and northeast North Dakota. Today we're bashing, not just breaking, bashing record highs. 96, the high in Fargo today, breaking a record of 93. 94 in Grand Forks, and I just heard Sisseton also at 94 degrees today, breaking a record there. 90 in Detroit Lakes for your current temperature. It's 90 in Roseau, 87 in Jamestown. No record out in our west communities. High and dry, a rumble of thunder starting to show up up to the north of uh, Becker County there uh, in the Norman and uh, Monoman County areas. We'll see a isolated storm or two tonight, but most of us stay hot and quiet. Sunset at 915. Grand Forks likewise will slip down into the 70s by 10 at 10 tonight. Now, coming up, we'll have a better chance of some scattered morning thunderstorms, and a few could have hail. Details here in just a few minutes. No hail, but the rain would certainly be relief. It would be nice. All right, thanks, Hutch. It's been a full week since the death of George Floyd, the incident sparking outrage, protests, and violence across the country. The worst of it in Minneapolis, where the tragedy unfolded. And Jay Gray is there with the very latest. I can't breathe! I can't breathe! I can't breathe. In the intersection where George Floyd died, a Minneapolis police officer's knee pushing into his neck, there's now a growing memorial and collision Fist up. Fist up. between frustration and faith. Floyd's brother Terrence, here for the first time, overwhelmed by emotion, sobbing, at times unable to walk on his own, kneeling to pray and joined by hundreds. Terrence pushing back against the violence that has followed his brother's death. What are y'all doing? Y'all doing nothing! Because that's not going to bring my brother back at all. The ambulance was his hearse. 
Late this afternoon, attorneys for Floyd's family releasing results of a private autopsy, disputing a coroner's report saying not only was it a knee to his neck, but two other officers pinning him down that killed him. He couldn't breathe. Asphyxia due to compression of the neck and of the back, and that's homicidal. I want to see them charged. They were accessory to that murder. As so many here and across the nation continue to push for justice and to honor Floyd's memory. Keep my brother's name ringing! That was Jay Gray reporting. Meanwhile, uh, in the Valley, they remain uneasy after the chaos uh, unfolded in downtown Fargo over the weekend. Uh, an early march in downtown area was uh, peaceful for the most part as they mourned and continued to show support for George Floyd. But then things got worse as things moved on with so many big events under the weight of many. A therapist in town says that you might want to talk with your kids so they don't feel like they're in this alone. Kids, when they're observing um, and listening and hearing adults talk about and seeing things in the media and seeing things happening around town, they may have a lot of different feelings and responses to that. If you think your son or daughter may need to talk to someone, we have more information on our Valley News Live app. President Donald Trump just wrapped up remarks in the Rose Garden promising to end the riots in the country by using military force if needed. In a video conference with governors today, he called for more force to bring violent flare-ups under control. Alice Barr is in Washington with the latest. As grief and boiling anger over police killings of black people seize cities from coast to coast, President Trump today urging governors to use force to take back the streets. In a video teleconference obtained by NBC News, the president telling governors, quote, most of you are weak. If you don't dominate, you're wasting your time. They're going to run over you. You're going to look like a bunch of jerks. You have to dominate. And... You have to arrest people and you have to try people and they have to go to jail for long periods of time. Critics asking why the president has yet to formally address the nation days into this crisis. We need the president to address this issue, to acknowledge that systemic racism is now and has been a problem in America. <laughs> For three days now, protests have raged outside the White House. The fires and flashbangs giving President Trump an up-close view of the turmoil across the country and briefly forcing him into an underground bunker Friday night. D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser imposing a 7 p.m. curfew after nearly 90 people were arrested yesterday when peaceful protests gave way to chaos and looting overnight. Smashed windows uh, and looting are becoming a bigger story uh, than the broken systems that got us here. President Trump's presumptive Democratic rival, Joe Biden, meeting with supporters in a Delaware church today and holding a virtual roundtable with mayors. Well, people are angry. We need that anger. Uh, we need that to compel us to move forward. Calls for action across a divided nation, insisting that only understanding the source can extinguish the flames. Minnesota Governor Tim Walz disagrees with President Trump's approach to dealing with violent protesters. On the call today, the president asked for Walz to speak on the situation in the Twin Cities. Governor Walz said he told the president a law enforcement crackdown and more arrests are not the answer. And I also shared with the president that, that a posture of um, a force on the ground is both unsustainable militarily, it's also unsustainable socially because it's the antithesis of how we live. It's the antithesis of civilian control. So I express that on the call. The governor did say the number of law enforcement presence will remain in the Twin Cities over the coming days. North Dakota has now announced another 48 people with testing positive for COVID-19. 40 of those new positives are from Cass County. The active case rate in the state is now at 547. 35 North Dakotans remain in the hospital. There were no new deaths reported today in North Dakota. The state's death toll linked to the virus remains at 61. Minnesota has announced another 10 deaths from the virus, bringing the state's total to 1,050. Another 361 new positive cases were also announced today. The active case number now sits at 4,717. 549 Minnesotans are currently in the hospital. 253 of those patients are in ICU. 
A Fargo woman has been charged with murder, of murdering her boyfriend over the weekend. Authorities say that 32-year-old Taryn Stately stabbed her boyfriend, Keenan Poitra, in the groin early Saturday morning after an argument about other women. Investigators report that during questioning, Stately changed her story several times and admitted to getting into a physical altercation and then admitted grabbing a steak knife and holding it up toward Poitra. He, she said that he, she did not know it, he, that she had hit Poitra, but admitted putting the knife in the garbage after police informed her they discovered it. A 26-year-old man was arrested after authorities say he led them on a high-speed chase on Interstate 29, eventually crashing into a home on East Prairiewood Drive in Grand Forks. Dustin Meadows is facing numerous charges, including reckless endangerment and reckless driving. Later on Valley News Live at 6, details on a fundraiser to help the family of fallen police officer Cody Holty. And we have morning thunder showers to begin our day. A couple of thunderstorms, one just north of the Detroit Lakes area. I'll have the latest on where these are going and what the rest of this very hot night looks like coming up right after this.